What's going, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. In this video, we got two true acid trip horror stories animated. First off, I'm gonna start by saying this. Kids do not do drugs. Okay, now I'm gonna say this. Cool kids who have done drugs. Let me know y'all craziest experience is like with any like form of, you know, narcotics that you, let me not say drug, any form of, you know, narcotics that you may have had. You know, if y'all, if y'all want to, if y'all want to know mine personally and stuff like that, just let me know. Maybe I'll do a little story time on it or whatever. But if you want to watch this one, the link going to be in the description. So make sure you look out for that. And let's go ahead and get into this one. That was the night I left drugs altogether. My name is Matt. Jeez, and bro. at 21, These I thought I so understood loud. the world. Maybe I just got to keep my headphones <laughs> How wrong was I? My friend had secured some Indian psychedelics that sages took to get closer to God. I had my own shit to deal with, so anything that could get me to God was going in. I mean, shit already the trip like began Jesus. as any other, with the vibrant tapestry of colors and the dissolution Never of the mind. physical boundaries that confine. Never mind. Let me not say that. If y'all saw the Russian paintings, Jesus is black. Find my consciousness. Just wanted to put that out but there. But this time, there was a shift, a dark undertow that pulled me towards something inexplicable. I found myself standing before a mirror, the glass no longer Sorry, a mere Jackson. reflector of reality, but a gateway to a realm I wish I had never discovered. As I peered into the mirror, the first wave of oh. horror hit me. A woman's face, twisted in agony, emerged from the depths. Her eyes, filled with an eternal despair, Jesus locked Christ. into mine, and I heard her voice reverberating silent? through my very soul. Help me. She pleaded. Her hands banging against the glass, Something creating ripples as if the mirror was the surface of they a disturbed pond. Knees. I stumbled back, my heart racing, yet I could not. Panging against the glass, creating ripples as if the mirror was the surface of a disturbed pond. I stumbled Reach back, in there, my heart racing, yet I could not tear my gaze away. The room around me darkened, and the mirror began to show more than just my own reflection. A child, no older than six, Crazy. appeared what is he doing the woman, her? his face contorted into a silent scream as he fell, over and over, never reaching the ground but perpetually caught in a loop of terror. I could almost hear the sound of his fall, a whisper of air that chilled my spine. Who are you? I managed to utter, my voice trembling. We are the trapped. The woman replied, her nigga. voice a melodic sorrow that tugged at the edges of my consciousness. Bound to relive our horrors, unable to find peace. I wanted to run, teeth. to escape the mirror's Sharp ghastly teeth. visions, but something held me in place. A morbid fascination, a need to understand. The mirror's surface rippled again, and a new horror took shape. A man, his body emaciated, chains right. wrapped around his limbs, dragging himself toward me. His eyes were hollows of despair, and with each movement, the chains tore into his flesh, leaving trails of ethereal blood. Free us! He so I know I said before that the dude the the character in the story looks like jesus but this dude actually might be jesus for real no no what what's the, no 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 blasphemy no no blasphemy no blasphemy but they did say jesus was black this might be him he rasped his voice a cacophony of pain and pleading i recoiled my mind reeling from the onslaught of their tortured existences. The air suddenly grew colder, a frigid embrace that felt like the touch of death itself. Why me? My, bad, I I'm too much. my voice lost in the quiet. growing tempest of their despair. You see us. You can free us. But how could I? Big ass it's lips. a crazy Sorry trip, yo. I started laughing. And suddenly, the mirror's surface calmed to show my own reflection once more. I, was just standing I woke like up that. the next day in a dilapidated structure where the boys from around the town came to get high. Before me the was the same mirror from somewhere. the trip. I saw that. The memories of the night suddenly clawed at the edges of my consciousness. It all felt like a bad dream, a figment of my imagination spurred by the psychedelic trip. Yet, 
The echoes of their pleas lingered, a constant reminder of the horrors I had witnessed. I spent the day in a daze, unable to shake the feeling that what I had experienced was more than just a hallucination. It was a call, a duty that I had been too afraid to accept. You know, one time when um, I was on shrooms one time, bro, I remember I was laying on the floor and like I was looking up at my ceiling and shit, right? And then like, I forgot what happened, but like all of a sudden there was, it was somebody right here and then two people on each side. And it was like, I think that's five in total. It was five people with hoods, like all looking down on me from like my ceiling type of thing. Like I could see like their body and figures on the hood. It's like I was laying on the ground and they were looking over me, bro. And like, but like, I wasn't scared or nothing. Like, I felt like everything was funny. Like, I just kept laughing at these niggas standing over me. I didn't know what else to do but laugh. And then like, I remember like I was laughing so hard that like, like I closed my eyes real hard to like laugh. And then like when I opened my eyes, they were gone. And that was probably like the craziest experience, but like it wasn't scary or nothing. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting shadows that danced like specters across my room. I knew like I could not ignore and their cries any like longer. Day, I had day. to return to the mirror, to tweaking. face the darkness, and to find a way to free the souls <clears> trapped <throat> within. But nothing could have prepared me for the truth that awaited me, a revelation that would forever change my understanding of the world and my place within it. That evening, I got high oh, for the last oh. time, yeah, with a resolve it. that felt both alien and integral Coca-Cola. to my being. I approached the mirror again. The room dimmed as if the light itself was hesitant to witness what was to come. My reflection stared back at me, a specter of the boy who had unknowingly crossed just taking into the realm of the damned. In mirrors, bro. I reached out, my fingers grazing that, the cold grass, half expecting to be pulled into the abyss. Instead, the surface rippled and the woman appeared once more, her expression one of solemn gratitude. You came back. She whispered. I, I, I want to help you, but I, I don't know how. The items. Open this, nigga. She said, her voice clearer now, as if my acknowledgement had given her strength. A lighter, a pack of salt, and a candle. They're the keys. Her instructions were cryptic. Yet, they resonated with a truth I couldn't Bro, you just deny. Did coke, lady. I looked down and saw He's a bag the in person my hand to be, to be with a lighter, a pack of free salt, right now. and a candle. Crazily, I did not even remember buying it. The woman guided me, her voice a beacon in the encroaching darkness. I placed the candle before the mirror and circled it with salt. But just as I was about to light it up, I stopped. I don't know what it yeah, was, I but being I felt a pull that just said that something wasn't right. I was still tripping. The world was spinning around my body. My body temperature yeah, shot up all of a sudden, body. and I was seeing colors that I didn't even know existed. And then I saw her eyes, ripe with anticipation. Light it. Set me free. Set us free. But I couldn't. Something was pulling me away. Out, out the, out hell. Set us free. She uttered again. My hands trembled. Set us free. Whoa. This time she yelled, impatient as ever, and I moved back Thumbnail. instinctively. That is when she oh. roared. Her lips parted to oh. reveal an array of pincer like sharp teeth turned into a T-Rex. With her gum protruding out. The child emerged as oh, well behind her, his that eyes might be better black than as space and skin pale. And then the man arrived, his skin decaying oh, and peeling he may off, be even better than I don't off know. his bones. She wailed, the child cried, the man wailed, and at that moment, I was as scared as I ever could be. Strange shapes were forming around oh, me, oh, mirrors appearing oh and disappearing, geometrical patterns appearing out of thin air. The floor underneath my feet started trembling as their cries Break the mirror, echoed. break the mirror. I felt the whole house shaking, and then, just as the woman banged on the mirror on his wall, feet. I collapsed, blackness surrounding my eyes. Yeah, when I woke hard. up, the room was that bright, do it the oppressive you. atmosphere lifting like a- Not, not that I know, not that I know, I, I've never, I've never done cocaine, I'm, I'm just assuming. At dawn, I stared at my reflection in that dirty mirror before me, still feeling goosebumps, searching for any sign of the horrors I had witnessed. 
but there was only me, my eyes wide with a mixture of fear and awe. I blamed it on the psychedelics. Whatever the trip was, it was just too bloody real. Yeah. In the days that followed, I convinced myself it had been nothing more than a hallucination. Might be time to put the drugs down, a bad brother. trip induced by the psychedelic. Yet, uh, a part of me couldn't shake the feeling of something profound Are you and taking the drugs or are the drugs real. taking you, brother? It wasn't until I stumbled upon an old dust-covered journal hidden beneath the floorboards of my room that I understood the true magnitude of what had transpired. The journal belonged to the previous occupant, a young woman who had dabbled in the occult. She spoke of the mirror, a family heirloom, and its power to trap the souls of the dead, binding them to relive their torments. There was a picture of her husband and child as well. What I saw that night wasn't a hallucination. It started as an adventure, a weekend escape to a the adventure of a lifetime. The heart of the forest surrounded by the allure of untouched yeah, nature. My friend Susan had suggested we try something new, Shout something to break the monotony of our daily routines. That something new was a psychedelic known for unlocking the deeper chambers of the mind. We were seeking enlightenment, or perhaps just a story to tell instead. how naively we danced into the jaws of an unfathomable nightmare. The first hit began innocuously enough. Laughter filled the cabin as the walls seemed to breathe and colors danced in vibrant arrays. It was magical, transcendent, until the night crept in, bringing with it a palpable sense of dread. Do you do it. feel that? I remember asking, my voice trembling as the joyful atmosphere soured. It's just the trip, Sylvia. Let it flow. She responded, her voice a soothing balm to my rising panic. But then, Good trip, I saw sir. some shadows twisting, converging into shapes that defied the natural laws of light, yeah, and among it. them emerged a figure with piercing blue eyes, eyes that seemed to penetrate the very essence of my being. No, did he? It was then that the laughter died, replaced by a silence so heavy it threatened to smother us. The forest demon, as I heard a sound call to me, was a figure born of the darkest ink of night. You know what's so funny? I just want to say, you know what's so funny about this story? Like, she saw a creature in the night and got dumb scared, right? This shit could have just been like... She could have she could have saw something like a deer in the distance, and her mind could have just took it all the way there, bro. That's what's so funny about this and taunted me with visions and of my other girl could see like a beautiful deer in a rainbow into a black and she could see, and she no see a monster stuck in a coffin lowered into the ground with no breath left then surrounded by spiders and rats which feasted on my body while my hands were chained she to breathe, and bro. then witnessing the forest demon charging at me each yeah, she needs loop to breathe. reset with slight variations a nightmarish groundhog day with the stakes of our sanity worst trip ever Susan said, and I remembered that thankfully I was just tripping bad. There was no shadow or forest demon, but I lapsed again into more scenarios. In one iteration, the demon chased me and my friend through the forest, its footsteps echoing our frantic heartbeats. Trees turned into grotesque figures, their branches reaching out to snatch at us, tearing at our clothes and skin. We'd stumbled into the cabin, believing ourselves safe, only for the door to burst open as Susan screamed for me to help her. Sylvia, please, you have to save me from it. Man, she's Sylvia. having a terrible Susan's trip. Please would pierce the chaos, her figure being dragged away into the darkness by the she's blue a eyed friend, horror. By the way. Each time I tried to save her, the scene would reset, plunging me back into the start of the nightmare. With each loop, the cabin grew more dilapidated, the forest more sinister, and the demon's grip on our reality tighter. Desperation set in as I fought to break the cycle. She, she's hard in her head right now. Nation. She needs somebody to kind the of variations check of the her back into reality. Like somebody need to in one, I saw Susan hit her real quick, cause some pain, just let like her know me. what's real, she urged and me made to up. hold her hand. But as soon as I did that, she like stopped me with an quick. unnatural force and came to in. a halt. That is when a sly smile crept up on her face, and her eyes suddenly turned blue. I tried to pull away, but she just kept smiling. And then, without warning, she groaned in a hoarse, unnatural voice. 
Within moments, she transformed into the forest monster, a dark being that chilled me to my bones. I suddenly felt my blood draining, and I yeah, started no, losing consciousness. Back in that is when suddenly, out of nowhere, a big stone flew in the air and smacked the demon in the face. It left my hand and turned to the source. Leave my friend alone. I heard momentarily, before losing consciousness. In another scenario, I saw Susan talking to the stairs, laughing about the abstract shapes that she was seeing and how hungry she was feeling. Suddenly, everything felt normal again. I returned to my senses. I could finally breathe clearly, felt my blood pressure return to normal, felt alive. This was the worst trip, like, ever. I mumbled. She laughed. Where did you even get these from? This guy... Which guy? All this the time. guy who grows shrooms the, in the graveyard behind my house. She laughed again. The forest nigga what? was the guy that what the gave hell, them the Seuss? shrooms. I managed to speak. What did you see? A lot of shit. What shit? There were all these images, scenery about like my worst fears ever. And in That's every you, scene, you were there saying, help me. I stood shocked. How did she know? Help me. She reiterated. You have to help me. She repeated, her voice heavier. Save me. Her voice started growing heavier and manly with each moment. Help me. She All screamed right. in a manly voice, and suddenly her blue eyes were back, and everything around me crumbled. All of it was still a trip. And then the scenarios of horrors began again. Through each iteration, one constant remained. Susan's plea for help against the backdrop of those haunting blue eyes. It became my anchor, the focal point of my resolve. I had to save her. I had to break the cycle. As the loops continued, a chilling realization dawned on me. Each scenario, no matter how twisted or surreal, carried a kernel of truth. A reflection of our innermost selves that we have tried to bury... The psychedelic hadn't just opened the door to our minds, it had shattered it, leaving us exposed to the elements of our psyche we weren't prepared to face. Then, without warning, the cycle halted. The abrupt end to the cycle was as disorienting as the loops themselves. I found myself lying in a sterile hospital room, the beeping of machines filling the space where the forest's eerie silence had once resigned. The psychedelic journey that had promised enlightenment had instead delivered me to the brink of madness, and from there into a coma that had lasted. Hey, bro. One thing. <clears throat> one thing I will say about I don't encourage any any you know taking of the narcotics and stuff. But if you do happen to, make sure if you're gonna take something like mushrooms, magic mushrooms, bro. Make sure that you have like if you have any like inner fears. Or you have any personal demons that you want to face, don't don't take them while you still have those things because all bad thoughts and all bad negative emotions, all that, the magic mushrooms bring those things to the forefront. So if you have unresolved issues or things that you're afraid of, or just like anxiety, all those type of stuff, they're gonna emphasize those things. So I I advise taking care of those things first. Before you try the magic mushrooms. In a month. As I regain consciousness, fragments. And also of take the take safe doses to too. The demon's blue eyes. Don't give yourself psychosis. The relief of waking was palpable, a stark contrast to the terror that had enveloped me in that endless loop. Yet, as the fog of sleep and drugs lifted, a hollow feeling settled in my chest. Susan? I croaked, my voice barely a whisper. The first word I had spoke after coming back to the living. The nurse who had been adjusting the IV paused and looked at me with a mixture of relief and sorrow. You're awake. We weren't oh, sure when overdosed. or if you'd come out of it. She said softly, offering me a gentle smile, but it didn't reach her eyes. There was something there, a shadow of something unsaid. Where's Susan? I pressed, the urgency in my voice fueling a growing sense of dread. The nurse hesitated, her expression shifting to one of discomfort. It was a moment before she spoke, her voice laden with the weight of words she wished she didn't have to say. Susan, 
She didn't make it. She finally admitted, her eyes dropping to avoid mine. I'm so sorry. She... she passed away the day you both were found. The news hit me like a physical blow, stealing the breath from my lungs. The loops, the demon, Susan's pleas for help. It all crashed down on me with a newfound, brutal reality. Guilt. You know, you know what I think happened as a as a person who has personally experienced the magic of the mushrooms. What I think happened, right? They were on a trip, right? And they ended up doing more than they should have. They were probably having a good time, bug or whatever. And then they just ended up doing too much shit, right? And Susan, she's great. I mean, she's just chopped and she's asking for help. Like, help me. I need water, doctor or whatever, right? But she's so out of it and like fucked up by the drug. Like, they're like, she doesn't realize the demons that she's fighting is the like, the, the, the narcotic type of thing. Like, like she's fighting that bitch, trying to stay alive, keep consciousness. Her friend's crying for help and she can't help because she's grit. That's what I think happened as somebody who's experienced these things for themselves. But that's it for this one. If you enjoy, which I hope that you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share all of that good stuff. And um, peace, love, and positivity. And I will catch y'all in the next one, man. It's two options in this world. Is you going to win or lose? Is you going to take the risk or not? You know you got to choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.